Dr. Fergani, thanks so much for that really informative presentation. So um, I'm your next speaker, and uh, Laura asked me to talk about organ and blood donation in the Ehlers-Danlos syndromes. I'd just like to mention I have no conflicts to report. Um, patients with the Ehlers-Danlos syndromes often ask about donating organs or plasma, and then we also hear from people who are wondering about the possibility of receiving organ transplants and whether the diagnosis of um, EDS or HSD might impact their eligibility to uh, receive organ transplantation. And I can tell you right now, there is precious little in the literature about these issues. I mean, I could full stop right there. <laughs> but um, I'll tell you a little bit about blood donation and organ donation and some things, some information that I did find by asking Dr. Google and um, some suggestions about where we can go from here. So when we think about blood donations, uh, we can theoretically, one can donate plasma, platelets, red cells, also uh, white cells, white blood cells, and um, these donations are usually arranged, uh, at least in the U.S., by the Red Cross. I did not find one paper in the biomedical literature about blood donations for people with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. There is one website for Memorial Sloan Kettering Hospital, which is a, a cancer hospital in New York City, Manhattan, which states that blood donations from persons with EDS will be accepted for their patients. And this is that, um, that website that you can see, it says Ehlers-Danlos Ehlers Syndrome, acceptable for blood donation. So when we think about blood donation, there are many different types of blood donation, but the most usual when people, when the Red Cross blood mobile comes around, they're lo usually looking for whole blood donation, and that usually involves about uh, a half a liter of blood which is collected. But if you're donating platelets or plasma or white cells, um, the volume that's removed from the person who's donating depends on their height, their weight, and usually their platelet count. Oops. So um, if you're donating a specific element of the blood, like platelets or plasma or white cells or red cells, uh, you undergo a process which is called aphoresis. And this is the process of removing a specific component of the blood, like the platelets, for example, and then returning the remaining components to the donor. So those specific components might be the platelets, the red cells, the plasma, or the white blood cells. And Understandably, this process takes a lot longer than the whole blood donation because the, they remove the blood, it has to be spun down and separated, and then the remaining components are returned to the donor. So when I started thinking about what might the impacts of blood donation be for people with EDS or HSD, I think the, these three things came to my mind. One would be the venous access, because typically they're taking a large amount of blood out and a large bore needle is used. So for people who have fragile veins or difficulty with venous access, that could potentially be a problem. The risk of bruising is always there. It's related to the venous access issue. And then if a large amount of blood is being removed, the risk of worsening symptoms of POTS or orthostatic intolerance because of the decrease in the circulating blood volume would also be something to consider. <clears throat> now, um, 
In terms of organ donation, again, I did not find one single paper about organ donation uh, for people uh, with the Ehlers-Danlos syndromes or hypermobility spectrum disorders. I did find this paper, which came from Italy, uh, talking about rare disease patients as potential organ donors. And the paper kind of talks about some of the issues that uh, transplant surgeons consider when they're thinking about accepting organs for, uh, for, for potential uh, organ donation. So the issue is the concern about putting the recipient at risk um, if organs are received from a patient who has a rare genetic disease. And uh, so that question prompted a review of um, the incidence of rare diseases among organ donors to the Italian National Transplant Center from Rome. And the authors for this paper looked at the incidence of rare diseases in donors uh, who um, presented for organ donation between July of 2017 to June of 2019. And during that two-year period in Italy, there were 19 donors who had rare diseases. And what the paper states is that four of these were rejected before the committee even started thinking about uh, doing a risk assessment. These were all patients who had metabolic disorders. Four of the others made it into the initial classification uh, stratification process but ultimately were rejected for transplantation. And those included one person with Marfan syndrome, one with Williams syndrome, one with Fragile X, and one with a, a dermatopolymyositis. And then seven uh, donors who had rare genetic diseases were accepted for organ transplantation, and 16 organs were ultimately transplanted from those people, including two hearts, three livers, and 11 kidneys. So when we think about what might be the issues for organ transplantation with EDS or HSD as a um, as a, in, in a donor, it, the question is really the tissue fragility um, because the surgeons worry that that could impact the success of transplantation. And this is particularly true for the vascular type of Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, but um, that kind of tissue fragility is seen, of course, in other types of EDS as well. And, um, you know, in the vascular Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, it's not uncommon to hear the, the surgeon say it's like trying to sew through wet tissue paper when you're doing a surgical procedure. And so if you think about the process of trying to sew in a donated organ and the difficulty in achieving hemostasis and getting a good, tight, uh, secure connection, one can understand why this might be a concern. And there was this one uh, paper reporting spontaneous fracture of an allograph and massive hemorrhage after a liver transplantation from a donor with EDS. Uh, this was reported back in 2007. Now the issue in this one was that the type of Ehlers-Danlos syndrome in this donor was not known. So it, it doesn't really inform our thinking about the whole process, uh, unfortunately. So thinking about what other issues might, might surround the question of organ transplantation, um, I, mast cell activation is another very important consideration and it may play a really important role in the sex, success or failure of a transplanted organ. And this would be true on both the donor and recipient side of the transplant. And I found one paper about the role of mast cells after solid organ transplantation, um, which discusses this issue and how mast cell activation can uh, play a very important role in the success or failure of solid organ transplantation. So uh, this is the website from the Joint UK Blood Transfusion and Tissue Transplantation Services, the professional advisory committee for that organization. 
and they go through a very long list of conditions, hereditary and otherwise, and the only thing they have to say here is in terms of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, that they will not accept organ transplantation from anyone with a diagnosis of EDS. And this uh, website, the Professional Advisory Committee, does not offer a discussion about why that is, but that's just out there uh, for the UK anyway. Now there is one exception, which is pancreatic islet cells. And I thought this was really interesting because the pancreatic islet cells are harvested from the pancreas and they're infused uh, into the donor similar to a blood transfusion. So for that kind of donation, there isn't the concern about the tissue fragility and the risks of a surgical procedure. So um, the Professional Advisory Committee in the UK is saying that pancreatic islets will be accepted from donors with uh, EDS. So in summary, there's really very little in, and almost nothing in the biomedical literature about organ transplantation in the setting of EDS and nothing about the hypermobility spectrum disorders. And we really need quite a bit more information. And I think this is a place where our registry, again, can uh, serve an important role to provide information about the experience of persons uh, living with EDS and HSD who receive organ transplants and about the success of organs tra transplanted from people uh, with EDS and HSD. So I think I may have actually brought us back up to time because um, we are now a few minutes before four and I would like to invite our speakers from this afternoon session up to the stage for our question and answer um, session.